in the United States, every single year, there are approximately 70,000 autistic children who become autistic adults. Approximately 85% of them are unemployed or vastly underemployed relative to their ability. The first Center for Autism and Innovation at Vanderbilt's School of Engineering started in about 2017 as an interdisciplinary initiative led by myself and a few other faculty colleagues in engineering, motivated by the challenge of developing technologies to support autistic adults in their journey toward meaningful employment. My oral motor apraxia means that I can be termed as a minimally speaking autistic. That is to say I can speak some conversational phrases, but I need to use augmentative communication such as text-to-speech apps, for the most part. I am utterly grateful I was not born 50 years ago. Where would I be without alternative communication technology and laws that are allowing for some inclusion? However, I am also disappointed at the slowness of progress in technology for us given we are in the age of artificial intelligence and machine learning. Technology can be made to be more intuitive and easy to use. General hope for assistive technology um, in the future is that with improvements um, to artificial intelligence and things like that, we'll have more adaptive assistive technology and more um, personalized assistive technologies. It is enormously important that the work that we're doing at the center is not only for autistic and neurodivergent people, but also of and by autistic and neurodivergent people. So the world is built for neurotypical people, and when it comes to developing technologies, having the input from neurodivergent people helps build technologies that are better suited to them because they experience the world in a way that is significantly different from how we neurotypicals experience the world. Some autistic people have better ways of thinking, like visual spatial, two visual spatial problems, better than their neurotypical peers. A lot of the computational systems that we build use pictures as input and use um, image operations to reason through problems in a way that maybe an autistic person would. So my research is primarily focused on understanding early language development and language outcomes. Uh, we are particularly focused on this in my lab because language is highly variable for neurodivergent individuals, particularly for those on the autism spectrum. Audiovisual speech processing is important for language and important for speech perception for everyone. For an example, we know that infants look to the mouth very early in life, particularly when they're mapping onto their native language and when they're learning new words. But even adults use these visual speech cues all the time. I'm using eye tracking where we have have a small camera at the bottom of a computer monitor that's tracking where um, infants are looking as they're watching an individual speak to them in kind of like this like infant sing-songy monologue. Um, and we're really focusing on how much time they spend looking to the eyes and looking to the mouth. So those are kind of what I mean by audiovisual speech cues, is having access to these cues on the face that help us perceive speech. One of the commonly held assumptions that we challenge with my work using um, automated facial coding is the assumption that individuals um, with autism um, lack empathy. And um, one of the ways that we do this is by using facial expressions to get a better sense of if they're able to express spontaneous facial expressions when responding to emotional videos or uh, any other stimuli. This is actually used as an alternative method for um, measuring facial expressions, an alternative to EMG. Neurodivergent individuals um, can face a number of challenges involving sensory difficulties. They may feel overstimulated. EMG would be a little bit more invasive in the sense that it would require electrodes to be placed in the face, and that can um, sometimes be not ideal for someone who has a sensitivity to water or tactile sensitivity. Assistive technologies are really crucial for advancing meaningful employment for autistic and neurodivergent people. While on the one hand, we know that autistic and other neurodivergent people have enormous abilities and talents, it is also the case that these individuals have real challenges and support needs that need to be met in order for them to be able to bring their full true selves to the world of work. 
We know that one of the largest barriers to employment and in the job recruitment process uh, from self-advocates is the interview process. So we've created Career Interview Readiness in Virtual Reality, or Server, which is a job interview simulator where a user can practice their interviewing skills with a virtual avatar. It uses a lot of inputs, such as being able to understand what they're saying, being able to track their eye gaze, even being able to track their facial expressions and using physiology like heart rate, how stressed they are. And it gives personalized feedback during the interview and adapts to them so that they get that practice. Our last system is a driving simulator, and this allows them to obtain practice with driving. We know that one of the barriers after getting a job is transportation as many of them don't drive. So this allows them to get that practice and it is also personalized so it gives them feedback based on if they're practicing safe driving skills like looking in their rearview mirror, keeping to the speed limit and things like that. The future of the Frisch Center for Autism and Innovation really depends on the next generation of engineers and scientists to bring their creative energy, their innovations for future technologies and approaches, but now armed with a real understanding of neurodiversity, a strengths-based understanding of what autistic and neurodivergent people can bring to the workforce so that those next generation technologies and inventions are more fully informed by that neurodiversity paradigm.